Income tax 2023-2024 special depreciation allowance overview. Get ready and some coffee so we can avoid the government forcing us to move into a shack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information can first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our cpa six pack shirts a must have for any pool or beach time mixing money with muscle always sure to attract attention yeah even if you're not a cpa you need this shirt so you can like pull in that iconic cpa six pack stomach muscle vibe man you know that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. You know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Be found in publication 946, how to depreciate property, section 179, deduction, special depreciation allowance, makers, listed property, and more tax year 2023 which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The sole proprietorship Schedule C ultimately rolling into line one income of the formula. Remember, in the Schedule C itself, basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses resulting in in essence net business income which is what rolls in from schedule c to line one of the income tax formula the formula outlining the calculation of the form 1040 this being the first page of the form 1040 schedule c rolling into line number eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one additional income schedule c rolling into line three business income or loss this is the schedule c profit or loss from business having an income statement format income minus expenses expenses basically business deductions also being typically the largest category that has different types of things within it some expenses being more difficult than others one of those difficult expenses being depreciation where even if on a cash based system as we've seen in prior presentation we're going to have to deviate from it in some areas because the tax code requires us to such as depreciable property property planting equipment which we can't typically expense when purchased just as say equipment expense but rather have to put on the books as an asset which you might ask how since i have a schedule c profit and loss no balance sheet well we have a depreciation schedule which is going to give us the balance sheet account of fixed assets and the accumulated depreciation helping us to calculate the current period's depreciation expense now quick recap remember that the depreciation is an accrual concept which the tax code is borrowing from accounting it's a generally accepted accounting concept and principle where the first thought would be if i have a ten thousand dollar piece of equipment i'm going to see how long i'm going to use it say 10 years divide the equipment by 10 years and then depreciate it lowering the value of the asset and consuming it in form of depreciation over 10 years a thousand dollars a year for example that's a straight line basis we could then say it makes sense to accelerate the depreciation because i'm going to use it more i'm going to get more benefit out of it in the few first years 
than the latter years. That would be some form of accelerated depreciation, the most common method being a double declining method, also legitimate from an accounting standpoint. Then they have stuff that's not legitimate from an accounting standpoint, but is there because of lobbyists and politicians trying to win favors and all that kind of stuff, stimulating the economy or trying to destimulate the economy. And that comes into the 179 deduction, which we talked about in prior presentation, allowing us possibly to take more of the deduction up front. And then we also have a, a special depre uh, depreciation again, allowing us to take more of the expense up front. These two kind of overlap, the 179 and the special depreciations doing a similar thing, allowing us in essence to expense most if not all of the depreciation of the property, which leads to the question, why didn't I just expense it in the first place on a cash-based system? And the answer is because again, it gets complicated with the tax code in terms of what you have to put on the books as an asset. And then these changes in the laws that deviate from the accrual based method. And then there's gonna be some restrictions on what we can depreciate under those first year depreciation rules. Okay, that said, claiming the special depreciation allowance. So you can take a special depreciation allowance to recover part of the cost of qualified property defined next placed in service during the tax year. So again, this would be over and above the normal depreciation, which would be similar to a double declining balance method, which would be for taxes, usually a maker's method, which we'll talk about in future presentations. This is the uh, special depreciation. So the allowance applies only for the first year you place the property in service. So the allowance is an additional deduction you can take after uh, section 179 deduction and before you figure regular depreciation under makers for the, the year you place the property in service. So the 179 deduction we talked about in a prior presentation is also typically applied in the first year and you could have a situation where they overlap and typically the idea might be that you take the 179 deduction and then they apply out whether or not you qualify for the special depreciation after that. In this case, that might be, you know, the, the, the rules change from year over year, but the 179 deduction might allow you to take the full cost of the equipment in the current year, whereas you might be a little bit more limited with the special uh, depreciation. So again, you wanna think about how you're gonna be combining those two together, especially if you're hitting dollar limitations with the 179 deduction, which as we saw in prior presentations is a fairly high limit for like small schedule C businesses, uh, but could be hit for sure for like larger businesses, for example, that would then have to think about this interplay between these uh, upfront depreciation methods to see how they would best allocate the, uh, the benefit to the property they're purchasing and think about planning. So this chapter explains what is qualified property. So what property qualifies for the special depreciation. It also includes rules regarding how to figure an allowance, how to elect not to claim an allowance, and when you must recapture an allowance. So see how to get tax help for information about getting publications and forms. So what is, quali what is qualified property? Your property is qualified property if it is one of the following. Qualified reuse and recycling property, certain qualified property acquired after uh, September 27, 2017, certain plant bearing fruits and nuts. The following discussion provides information about the types of qualified property listed above for which you can take the special depreciation allowance. All right, so we've got the qualified reuse and recycling property. So you can take a 50% special depreciation allowance for qualified reuse and recycling property. Qualified reuse and recycling property is any machinery or equipment, not including building or real estate, along with any uh, appurtenance, appurtenance that is used exclusively to collect, distribute, or uh, recycle qualified reuse and recyclable materials 
as defined in section 168M3B of the Internal Revenue Code. Qualified reuse and recycling property also includes software necessary to operate such equipment. The property must meet the following requirements. The property must be depreciated under makers. That's the normal depreciation methods. So it would fit under makers when we talk about makers in future presentation. The property must have a useful life of at least five years. The original use of the property must begin with you after August 31st, 2008. So notice original use here. Uh, you must have acquired the property by purchase. So you have to purchase the property rather than inheritance or gift or something like that. As discussed under property acquired by purchase in chapter two after August 31st, 2008 with no binding written contract for the acquisition in effect before September 1st, 2008. The property must be placed in service for use in your trade or business after August 31st, 2008. So accepted property, qualified reuse and recycling property does not include any of the following. So any rolling stock or other equipment used to, trans, uh, to transport, reuse or recyclable materials, property acquired to be depreciated using the alternative depreciation system, the ADS system versus the makers system, which is kind of the default makers is. Uh, for other property acquired to be depreciated using ADS, see required use of ADS under which depreciation system, GDS or ADS. We'll get into that uh, in more detail in future presentations when we start talking about, for example, makers. Other bonus depreciation property to which section 168K of the Internal Revenue Code applies, property for which you elect not to claim any special depreciation allowance discussed later. So it is possible that you could say, okay, I have the ability to take it, but maybe I don't want to take it. You might ask, why would you do that? And in some cases, it might be a situation where you have low income in the first and the current year. And because of the progressive tax system, you have more income that you expect in later years and therefore will be in significantly higher tax brackets. So you can imagine situations where you might actually not want to take more depreciation upfront, but default position is usually to take more depreciation sooner rather than later. Property placed in service and disposed of in the same tax year. So if you bought it and disposed of it in the same tax year, it doesn't look like it's depreciable property, which by definition is usually something that's going to benefit you over multiple years into the future, which is the purpose of depreciating it. Property converted from business use to personal use in the same uh, tax year acquired. Property converted from personal use to business use in the same or later tax year may qualify, may be qualified reused and recycled property. So when, when we convert the property, it often causes kind of an issue with regards to one, can we include the special depreciation? And two, what's the cost or basis of the property given the fact that I didn't just purchase it on the free market, but rather are transferring it from personal uh, to uh, business. So what's gonna be the basis calculation could be a complication. So certain qualified property acquired after September 27, 2017. So you can elect, uh, you, you can elect to take 80% special depreciation allowance for property acquired after September 27, 2017 and placed in service after December 31st, 2017. 22 and before January 1st, 2024, other than certain property with a long production period and certain aircraft. So you can elect to take 100% special depreciation allowance for certain property with a long production period and certain aircraft placed in service before January 1st, 2024. Your property is qualified property if it meets the, fo uh, the following. So now we have this generally for oftentimes for people, this 80% limitation. So you will recall with the 179 deduction, much of the property that might qualify, you might've been able to take up to 100% up to that dollar limitation. And here we've got basically the 80%. So you can imagine when you combine this together with the 179 deduction, what that combination might look like. You might say, well, what if I go over the dollar limit on the 179 deduction, then I take the 179 deduction as high as I can, and then possibly for whatever I couldn't take on the 179, I may st still be able to get a benefit of the 80% special depreciation. 
if you have a piece of property that qualifies for both 80% special depreciation and the 179, you would think you might have an incentive to take the 179 deduction because possibly you can get the whole uh, amount as a deduction as opposed to the 80% of the deduction up front. So there's a question of which, uh, which of the two does a certain property qualify for? And then there's a question of how do the two upfront deductions interact with each other, which will become particular importance possibly when you have a uh, property that's clearing certain dollar limitations on the ability to take the deduction. So tangible property depreciated under makers with a recovery period of 20 years or less. Computer software uh, defined in the depreciation under section 167 F1 of the Internal Revenue Code. By the way, most we're talking tangible property depreciated under makers. That's the normal depreciation method with a recovery period of 20 years or less. Most of the property oftentimes is going to be under the 20 periods. Much of the machinery and equipment, for example, for small businesses will often be like three, five, seven year property, right? So water utility property, qualified film, television, and live theatrical productions as defined in section 181 D and E of the Internal Revenue Code, a specified plant for which you made the election to apply section 168 K5 for the tax year in which the plant is planted uh, or gra grafted, explained later under certain plants bearing fruits and nuts. Remember that any kind of farming and cultivation gets a little bit more complex, often has its own kind of set of rules due to the complexity of trying to value things like livestock and land that's actually producing stuff as opposed to land that just has a building on it and things like that. Uh, so you want to make sure that if you're a tax preparer, if you deal with, with farming and agriculture, that you make it your specialty, that, that could be a great specialty to play in. If you, if you aren't a specialized area, you're going to need to do more research in there. If you take on clients within that section, if you're not willing to do that, don't take on clients within that section unless you're willing to do that. So it is not ex ex uh, accepted property. Explain later under accepted property. All right. Qualified property must also be placed in service before January 1st, 2027 or before January 1st, 2028, certain property with a long production period and for certain aircraft and can be either new property or certain used property. So this question can come up to what does it have to, can it, does it have to be new or used? And it says here new property or certain used property. All right, note. For certain qualified property required after September 27, 2017 and placed in service after December 31, 2023 and before January 1, 2025, other than certain property with a long production period and certain aircraft, you can elect to take a 60% special depreciation allowance. So for certain property with a long production period and certain aircraft placed in service after December 31st, 2023 and before January 1st, 2025, you can elect to take an 80% special depreciation allowance. Long production period property. To be qualified property, long production period property must meet the following requirements. The property has a recovery period of at least 10 years. So it's longer, 10 years, right? Where oftentimes other recovery periods for small pieces of equipment, for example, a lot of small businesses will be qualified as within that three, five, seven year period, right? So the, the property has a recovery period at least 10 years or is uh, trans, it's transportation property. Transportation property is tangible personal property used in the trade or business of transporting persons or property. The property is subject to section 263A of the Internal Revenue Code. The property has an estimated production period exceeding one year and an estimated production cost exceeding $1 million. Uh, you must have acquired the property or acquired the property pursuant to a wit written contract entered into before January 1st, 2017. Non-commercial aircraft. To be qualified property, non-commercial aircraft must meet the following requirements. 
So the aircraft must not be tangible personal property used in the trade or business of transporting persons or property except for agricultural or uh, firefighting purposes. The aircraft must be purchased as discussed under property acquired by purchase in Chapter 2 by a purchaser who at the time of the contract for purchase makes a non-refundable deposit of the lesser of 10% of the cost or uh, $100,000. The aircraft must have an estimated production period exceeding four months and a cost exceeding $200,000. You must have acquired the aircraft or acquired aircraft pursuant to a written contract entered into before January 1st, 2027. Special rule, syndicated leasing transactions and uh, accepted property have these special rules. Let's look at the syndicated leasing transactions. If qualified property is originally placed in service by a leasor, the property is sold within three months of the date it was placed in service and the user of the property does not change, then the property is treated as originally placed in service by the taxpayer no earlier than the date uh, of the last sale. Multiple units of property subject to the same lease will be treated as originally placed in service no earlier than the date of the last sale of the property uh, is sold within three months after the final unit is placed in service and the period between the time the first and last units are placed in service does not exceed 12 months. So accepted property, uh, qualified property acquired after September 27, 2017 does not include any of the following property placed in service or planted or grafted and disposed of in the same tax year. So again, if you have that situation, then it it doesn't seem like it would qualify for the depreciation because again, it's not long-term property, which is usually has more than one year of impact or benefit. Property converted from business use to personal use in the same tax year acquired. So you bought the property and then transferred it from Uh, the business use to personal use in the same year, property converted from personal use to business use in the same or later uh, tax year may be qualified property. So property acquired to be depreciated under the alternative depreciation system, that's the ADS uh, system, which isn't usually the default. So this includes listed property used 50% or less in a qualified business use, for other property acquired uh, required to be depreciated using ADS, you can see required use of ADS under which depreciation system, GDS or ADS, which we'll talk about later. Again, property for which you elected not to claim the special depreciation, property described in section 168K9A and placed in service in any tax year beginning after December 31st, 2027, property described in section 168K9B and placed in service in any tax year beginning after December 31st, 2017.